Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lecture of 19 SCPHY U301. We have been discussing the second chapter, Partial Differentiation. And these are the topics that we have discussed so far. The concept of total differential is as follows. Suppose we have a function which is a function of two variables x and y. And now if we change both these variables by infinitesimally small amount x is changed to x plus dx and y is changed to y plus dy then naturally the function will change and since the changes in x and y are infinitesimally small change in function will also be infinitesimally small and this small change small infinitesimal change in the function can be calculated by using partial differentiation as follows dou f by dou x into dx plus dou f by dou y into dy now it is straightforward to calculate the total differential for function of any number of variable the chain rule is as follows suppose we have a function of two variables x and y and x then depends on two variables u and v and y also depends on the two variables u and v and suppose we want to find this differentiation find this partial derivative tf by sorry dou f by dou u then it is equal to dou f by dou x into dou x by dou u plus dou f by dou y into dou y by dou u this relation can be easily modified for function of any number of variables. These are the topics that we want to discuss today. We want to consider the application of partial differentiation for changing variables. Here we will consider change of variables from rectangular and polar coordinate system. We will also consider one example of that. Let's first quickly review what rectangular and polar coordinate systems are. So, for rectangular coordinate system, a point is given by the coordinate x and y, where x is this length of the rectangle and y is this length. For polar coordinate system, coordinates of a point are given by r and theta, where r is radius of the circle which passes from the point and which is centered at the origin. And this angle theta is the rotational angle this line makes which passes through origin and the point with positive x axis. So these are x and y axis. Same point can now either be given by these coordinates x and y or it can be written by these coordinates r and theta in polar coordinate system. And it happens many times that one of the coordinate system is preferred over other because of its convenience. Let's see how they differ by the unit vector. Suppose I have this rectangular coordinate system with axis x and y, then no matter where I consider the point, unit vectors in this case are same. It is i which has length 1 and which is directed along positive x axis and j has length 1 and it is directed along positive y axis. Now, no matter which point I consider in the plane, these i and j are always same. Their magnitude is naturally 1 because they are unit vectors and at the same time, they also have the same direction irrespective of at which point I consider the two unit vectors i and j. Now, unlike rectangular coordinate system, Unit vectors in plane polar coordinate system are given by these two vectors ER which is called as radial vector and it is always directed radially away from the center of the circle which is the origin. So this is ER for this given point and the other unit vector called as tangential unit vector has of course length which is equal to 1 and its direction is tangent to the circle. And it makes an angle of 90 degrees, positive 90 degrees with ER. Therefore, if we consider this point, ER is this vector which has length 1 and which is radially outward from the center or the origin. 
and e theta is perpendicular to that making positive rotational angle with er now depending on the point these er and the e theta now have the different directions sorry this is er and this is e theta so depending on where we consider the point in plane polar coordinates the unit vectors er and e theta have different directions their magnitudes however are same because their unit vectors their magnitudes have to be one let's now see how we can transform from one coordinate system to other coordinate system suppose this is the point with coordinates x and y in rectangular coordinate system and r and theta in polar coordinate system then when we are converting from rectangular to polar coordinate system we know what x and y are and we want to find out what is r and theta in terms of x and y from the geometry if we look at this triangle which is basically a right angle triangle then we can see that r should be equal to square root of x square plus y square and theta is tan inverse of y by x we just have to keep in mind that this theta is rotational angle and depending on where the point is in one of the four coordinates that theta is to be calculated from polar to rectangular coordinates now we know r and theta and we have to write x and y in terms of r and theta which is r cos theta and y is r sin theta so this was the quick review of the two coordinate system now suppose we are given a function f which is given in terms of x and y and many times we want to write that function in terms of r and theta so we want to change the coordinate system from rectangular to polar when we have to do this it is straightforward we can change x to r cos theta and y to r sin theta we will get f which is function of r and theta many times we are given differentials which are rectangular coordinate system that means we have differentiation of f with respect to x partially or we have derivative to f by do y or any higher powers where f is differentiated with respect to x and y only but we want to change the dependence of this function f from x y to r theta or we want to transform the equation in polar coordinate system then we want all these derivatives with respect to r and theta so we want to transform this given differential equation partial differential equation with respect to r and theta this is desirable in many physical applications and when we have to do it it can be done as follows let's first consider how we can change the differentiation of function which is given as a function of x y and which is differentiated partially with respect to x in terms of r and theta if we use chain rule here i can write this do f by do x as do f by do r into do r by do x plus do f by do theta into do theta by do x so here once we change x and y in f we can write this as do f which is now function of r and theta by do r into do r by do x plus do f which is written in terms of polar coordinates differentiated partially with respect to theta into d theta by dx now to transform this derivative completely we have to find out these two terms do r by do x and do theta by do x we know r is equal to square root of x square plus y square and therefore do r by do x is equal to 1 divided by square root of x square plus y square 1 by 2 
into 2x so this will get cancelled but we have to write the right hand side in terms of r and theta x is r cos theta and this is r square cos square theta plus r square sin square theta therefore do r by do x can be written as r cos theta divided by r into cos square plus sin square will be 1 and this is what we have so do r by do x is cos theta so this is the one term that we want to find out we will also need the second term which is do theta by do x theta or tan theta is equal to y by x and therefore i'll differentiate this relation this equation with respect to x now which will give us sec square theta into do theta by do x is equal to minus y by x square so do theta by do x is equal to this is minus y is r sin theta divided by x square is r square cos square theta this six square when i take it on right hand side it is cos square theta so this gets cancelled and therefore do theta by do x is equal to minus sin theta by r now i can plug in these two partial different derivatives here in this equation and get do f by do x as do r by do x is cos theta into do f by do r minus sin theta by r into do f by do theta so this is how first order partial derivative for do f by do r can be transformed into polar coordinate system let's now consider how we can transform do f by do y in polar coordinate system this can be done by using this chain rule do f by do r into do r by do y plus do f by do theta into do theta by do y now we need to obtain this do r by do y and do theta by do y r is square root of x square plus y square and therefore do r by do y is 1 by 2 into 1 by square root of x square plus y square into 2y this gets cancelled we are left with y which is r sine theta divided by r this term is 1 and therefore do r by do y is sin theta let's now find out do theta by do y we know tan theta is y by x now we want to obtain this do theta by do y so I'll differentiate the whole equation with respect to y that will give us sec square theta which is derivative of tan theta with respect to theta into do theta by do y. When we differentiate right hand side we simply get 1 by x and therefore do theta by do y is cos square theta which is this sec square theta taken on right hand side divided by r cos theta so this will get cancelled and do theta by do y is cos theta by r now we can use these two partial derivative in this relation and get do f by do y which is in rectangular coordinate as sin theta 
dou f by dou r plus cos theta by r into dou f by dou theta. So, this is how we can transform first order partial differential of a function with respect to y in terms of first order differential with respect to r and theta. Let's quickly summarize how we can transform a differential equation from rectangular to polar coordinate system. A function when is given in terms of x and y can be converted to a function with independent variables r and theta by using these relations x is r cos theta and y is r sin theta. So once we change x and y in the given function with r cos theta and r sin theta respectively we will get the function in terms of r and theta. Suppose we have this derivative first order derivative with respect to x then to transform it into polar coordinate system it becomes cos theta this is cos into do f by do r minus sin theta by r into do f by do theta and do f by do y this partial derivative is sin theta do f by do r plus cos theta by r into do f by 2 theta. Let's see one example of this transformation. We will consider an equation which is called as wave equation which is basically this do 2 psi by do x2 plus do 2 psi by do y2 is equal to 1 by c square do 2 psi by do t2. You can see that this is a partial differential equation. The psi here is called as the displacement. Generally, it is termed as displacement. Its physical meaning will depend on what kind of wave we are considering. If we are considering electromagnetic wave, then this psi will be electric and or magnetic field. If we consider sound wave, then this psi can be density of the medium from which the wave is traveling. If we consider a transverse wave through a string or a membrane, then that psi actually is the displacement of the membrane or of the string from its equilibrium position. So no matter which wave we consider, this equation is always obeyed. In this equation, C is speed of the wave in the medium. The C is property of the medium. C can of course vary from one point to one point. So it can in general be a function of space and of time if the properties of the medium are changing because of some reason it can be spatial dependence which depends on the space or it can be temporal dependence which depends on time but we will consider a simple situation for this example c is constant it is not changing spatially or temporally so we will treat c as a constant for this particular example let's see this example suppose i have this membrane this circular membrane Right now, don't worry about these dashed and these solid lines. I'll explain what they are. Suppose this membrane is being excited at the center of it. It is a circle. It is a circular membrane and it is being excited at the center. It is being hit at the center and therefore what will happen is transverse waves will be produced and they will travel in this direction, in radially outward direction. And we want to analyze these waves which are traveling through this membrane when it is excited at the center. Now for examples like this, we have to start with the wave equation dou 2 psi by dou x2 plus dou 2 psi by dou y2 is equal to 1 by c square dou 2 psi by dou t2. Now clearly this left hand side is given in rectangular coordinate system. These partial derivatives are in rectangular coordinate system. We have to convert that equation to polar coordinate system and why we want to do that? 
will be clear when we complete the transformation. Let's begin. What we have to do to transform this to polar coordinate system is we have to write these partial derivatives dou 2 psi by dou x2 and dou 2 psi by dou y2 in polar coordinate system. We have to change these variables x and y to r and theta. Let's see how we can do it. In the previous slides, we saw how we can write dou psi by dou x in terms of r and theta. It is cos theta into dou psi by dou r minus sin theta by r into dou psi by dou theta. Now we want to transform this second order partial derivative, however which is equal to partial derivative of dou psi by dou x with respect to x. We already have dou psi by dou x here. Let me call that this is a function g and therefore dou 2 psi by dou x2 is actually dou 2 sorry dou g by dou x. This dou g by dou x can be transformed as cos theta into dou psi by dou sorry dou g by dou r minus sin theta by r into dou g by dou r. Now to get the second order partial differentiation which is, which is basically dou 2 psi by dou x2 I have to plug in these as g and what I get is this cos theta into dou dou by dou r of this whole term cos theta into dou psi by dou r into sorry minus sin theta by r into dou psi by dou theta minus this is for the first term, the second term now is sin theta by r into dou by dou r. Sorry, this is this has to be dou theta of the same relation cos theta dou psi by dou r minus sin theta by r dou psi by dou theta. This is equal to cos theta. Now I have to differentiate the square bracket partially with respect to r. The first term cos theta is a constant when I differentiate it with respect to r. So it is cos theta into dou 2 psi by dou r2 minus. First I will differentiate 1 by r partially with respect to r, which is plus sin theta into r square and this dou psi by dou theta is unchanged minus now I'll differentiate dou psi by dou theta with respect to r so this is what I get minus the second term now is sin theta by r This is now first I'll differentiate here. I'll first differentiate cos theta with respect to theta, which is minus sin theta into dou psi by dou r. This minus sign I'll consider it here so it is easier. Plus now cos theta is kept constant when I differentiate it and I get dou 2 f dou theta by dou r minus. I will first differentiate sin with respect to theta which is cos theta by r and the second term dou psi by dou theta as it is. Now I will differentiate dou psi by dou theta with respect to theta which is sin theta by r into dou 2 psi by dou theta 2 here dou 2 psi by dou x2 is equal to 
first let me club these terms which are cos square theta dou 2 psi by dou r2 plus sin square theta by r square dou 2 psi by dou theta 2 now i'll collect the terms which are these mixed partial differentials here and here which is minus sin theta cos theta by r into do 2f by do r do theta and the second term is minus again sin theta cos theta by r into do 2f by do theta do r i have collected these four terms now i'll collect these terms with first order partial differential 1 2 and 3 which will be plus cos theta sin theta by r into do psi by do theta i'll continue here in this corner so the second term is plus sin square theta by r into do psi by do r and the third term is here which is again plus sin theta cos theta by r square no it's just r no it's r square this is also r square do psi by do theta let's quickly see if it is correct this has to be psi then this is which term this do r by do theta this is also psi it seems to be okay now let's now convert do 2 psi by do y2 the other second order partial differential in the wave equation this is equal to differentiation of do psi by do y let me call that as g now now g we have already used so let's call it h where h is do psi by do y which we have derived in one of the previous slides which is sin theta do psi by do r plus cos theta by r into do psi by do theta therefore do h by do y which is basically do 2 psi by do y2 is equal to sin theta this is do h by do r plus cos theta by r into do h by do theta here i am simply using the equations for first order transformation that we have derived here the function is h which is this right hand side now we will plug that right hand side into this equation to get sin theta into do do r of sin theta do psi by do r minus or plus cos theta by r into do psi by do theta this is h remember the second term is cos theta by r and 
and that is partial differentiation with respect to theta of h which is sine theta dou psi by dou r plus cos theta by r into dou psi by dou theta now let's first differentiate this term with respect to r sine theta is independent so what we will get is sine theta into sine theta as it is and differentiation of dou psi by dou r with respect to r partially is this plus now we have two terms which may depend on r and therefore we have to use uv rule cos theta however is same so i'll first differentiate dou psi by dou theta with respect to r which is dou 2 psi dou r dou theta plus or it will be minus because i am differentiating one, 1 by r with respect to r it is cos theta by r square into dou psi by dou, th dou theta plus second term i'll write here is cos theta by r into first i'll differentiate this first term with respect to theta now both these terms can depend on theta and therefore first let's differentiate sine theta with respect to theta which is cos theta second term as it is plus sine theta and differentiation of dou psi by dou r with respect to theta is dou 2 psi dou theta dou r plus now we have to differentiate this term which is also a product term first let's define let's differentiate cos theta so it is minus sine theta by r and the second term is unchanged plus now let's keep cos theta as it is and differentiation of dou psi by dou theta with respect to theta is this so let's again club all the terms which are second order non-mixed derivatives which will give us sine square theta dou 2 psi by dou r2 plus cos square theta by r square this term but we have to multiply it by this so it is dou 2 psi by dou theta 2 plus now let's collect these mixed second order derivative 1 2 and that's it so it is now sine theta cos theta by r into dou 2 psi by dou r dou theta the second term is this which is again positive cos theta into sine theta by r into dou 2 psi dou theta dou r now let's collect the first order differentials 1 2 and 3 plus first let's write this term which is sine theta or minus this term is negative minus sine theta cos theta by r square into dou psi by dou theta then the second first order term is this which is positive now cos square theta by r into dou psi by dou r and the third term is negative which is sine theta cos theta by r square into dou psi 
by dou theta so here we have the second order partial differential dou 2 psi by dou y2 so on this slide we calculated dou 2 psi by dou x2 here we have dou 2 psi by dou y2 and we have to add these two terms so wave equation is this dou 2 psi by dou x2 plus dou 2 psi by dou y2 is equal to 1 by c square remember c is constant that is the case we are considering dou 2 psi by dou t2 now i can plug dou 2 psi by dou x2 and dou 2 psi by dou y2 from the previous slides and when we add them what we get is this dou 2 psi by dou x2 plus dou 2 psi by dou y2 i'm leaving it to users to do this addition but many of the terms will get cancelled and the only terms which are left in the addition are these dou 2 psi by dou r2 plus 1 by r square dou 2 psi by dou theta 2 plus 1 by r dou psi by dou r now you can convince yourself that these are the only terms left now we will rearrange these two terms here if i differentiate partially with respect to r which is r d psi by dr what we get is first r differentiated so it is just one dou psi by dou r plus r into dou 2 psi by dou r2 from this what i'll do is i'll multiply and divide these two terms by r so what i get is dou 2 psi by dou r2 plus 1 by r dou psi by dou r plus the second term which is double differentiation of psi with respect to theta is as it is so this is equal to 1 by r into r into dou 2 psi by dou r2 plus dou psi by dou r plus the second term is 1 by r square dou 2 psi by dou theta 2 now this is nothing but this left hand side term and what we have is 1 by r dou by dou r of r dou psi by dou r plus 1 by r square dou 2 psi by dou theta 2 so this is the left hand side of the differential equation and therefore when we convert this equation this wave equation in polar coordinate system what we get is this 1 by r 2 by dou r of r dou psi by dou r remember here we cannot take this r outside this differentiation because it is being differentiated with respect to r it depends on r plus the second term is 1 by r square dou 2 psi by dou theta 2 is equal to 1 by c square dou 2 psi by dou t2 so this is the wave equation and when we solve this partial differentiation you can see that since the dependence is on r and theta we will get psi in terms of r and theta to see why it is beneficial to use plane polar coordinate system let me rewrite this equation it is 1 by r dou by dou r of r dou psi by dou r plus 1 by r square dou 2 psi by dou theta 2 is equal to 1 by c square dou 2 psi by dou t2 so this is the 
differential equation which waves obey when they travel from the center radially outward on this membrane the problem that we are considering now c is speed of the waves and we are considering the situation where c is constant now due to symmetry of this situation you can sense that this psi dou psi by dou theta or dou 2 psi by dou theta should be equal to 0 why because due to the situation psi should be independent of theta and therefore in this situation when we write this wave equation what will happen is this second term is equal to 0 and therefore we will have one less term when we solve this differential equation that equation will boil down to this and in many situation it happens that one coordinate system is beneficial over the other coordinate system the same procedure can be extended for three dimensional space where we want to change the dependence from x y z to r theta and phi where we are converting from cartesian coordinate system to spherical polar coordinate sp system let's quickly summarize we first consider how we can change from rectangular to polar coordinate system now in similar way we can change coordinate system from polar to rectangular to do this transformation we have to write dou f by dou r in terms of dou f by dou x and dou f by dou theta there will be these functions here and similarly dou f by dou theta is to be transformed to dou f by dou x and dou f by dou theta i am leaving it for you to do this and we then considered an example where we used only this first order transformation to get the relation for a second order differential also second order derivatives also that is all for this lecture this was the last video for this chapter partial differentiation from next lecture we will start with the third chapter which is vector analysis thank you for watching this video